uh, an interesting story. I had a problem, um, it was with one of these machines, uh, a Generation 10 machine. Uh, I was in a school in Georgia, it was a middle school in Georgia, and they did the hallways, it ran flawlessly in the hallways. Um, they wanted to do the cafeteria. Cafeteria was nothing more than a uh, uh, center block square. It was, it was a complete square, square room. They folded the tables up and everything, put them against the wall, so I had a perfectly square room to work with, with walls. Now again, these machines where they were all sonar, they had to have walls. And with these sonars, you had a, uh, uh, a long range sonar and uh, just a regular short range sonar. That long range sonar, if I'm not mistaken, I think went out 15 feet, or I'm sorry, Maybe 30 feet. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while. But that would give you a, a, a pretty good space to uh, operate in with a, with a long range sonar. So I was within range of both walls. So when I made the map, it was just basically straight down. A very easy map to make. So when the machine's running, after I get everything mapped, as the machine's running, it goes down, it turns left the way it's supposed to and it's supposed to come back up the left wall. And then it's supposed to do offsetting circles. Some people call it a Zamboni pattern until it finishes on the right wall and that's, that would be the end of it. If there was another hallway or something to do at that point, it would maneuver to the next hallway. So what this machine was doing, it was going down the center and it would go to the left and it would start up the wall and then come out about five feet, five, five to eight feet and then perfectly straight back till it gets almost to the end and then dips back into the wall and finishes its turn. Goes perfect offset down the center, comes back again and does the same thing just until it gets to the middle and then it runs perfect till it gets to this other side and then it starts doing the, when it starts getting closer to the wall, it starts pulling it off. I get on the laptop and I keep trying to fake it and push it next to the wall and tell it, no, I need you to go closer to the wall and it never would work. Had engineering and everybody involved. Worked with this thing for three hours. Three hours I, I messed with this thing and I, I'd give up. And I was sitting on my toolbox and I remember I had my head back and I was thinking, and I just kind of look up and it's like, oh my gosh, there it is. They had a tray ceiling and using sonar, sonar only, it was getting an echo. And that's the problem with just using sonar as a navigational device. It was getting an echo from that tray ceiling. So when you watch the machine run down the center, it was perfectly fine, but as it came over to the wall and started up, it would come out right to where the ceiling would go up, and that's where it would run. So it was basically running inside that tray. So, <laughs> you know, after everybody found out about that, it's kind of like, oh, I remember a time, you know, I was working in a basement in a hospital or something, and they had a, a, a rack that had a like, conduit and wiring and stuff in it, and we never could get the machine to run close to the wall because the echo, it would never go close to the mm -hmm. wall, and kind of found that out by accident. <laughs> that, was, that was one that, you know, kind of bit me in the butt there for about three hours, and... Uh, <laughs> So now when we used to be when we would go in and look at a site, supposed to be cleaning the floor, we're walking around looking at the ceilings. That's like everybody's like, what are you looking at the ceilings for? It's like, just trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs>